frequently like every week we used to do for these other sclerosis. Here you give one injection, send the child home on an OPD basis, call back after three weeks and we give a series of uh, six injections and many times huge cystic hydromas have disappeared, including in humans. In this case, of course, we have done a surgery, excised the whole thing and uh, kept the drain. Or you again have something like this, especially in the parotid region and in a smaller child, it could be a mixed hemangioma and lymphangioma. So the hemangioma part could be dangerous and the lymphangioma part is not so dangerous. Always remember in a cystic hydroma, what is seen is what is filled up lymphatic vessels. Adjacent to this, there may be lymphatic vessels which are not filled up still, which may fill up at a later stage. So you do a good job, we excise it, we feel proud of ourselves, pat ourselves on the back and after three months they come back with a so-called recurrence. And of course there are enough of our uh, friends who will tell them, see, you will do a good job, it has recurred again. It's not the real recurrence, it is adjacent part which has started growing, which is blocked again. And therefore you have to warn the parent that this may so-called recur. It's not a recurrence. It's just the adjacent part. Now, in an eventual lymphangioma, we tend to be a little bit more conservative because the eventual part may disappear on its own without having to do anything much. So, we wait till about two years without doing any surgery, any intralesional, any interference. The eventual part may go away and then we can do the uh, lymphangioma part. Only thing is in this area, we have to be careful when we are operating, is the facial. Again, signal cystic swelling right in the midline. You know the classical way, ask the child to swallow and see if it goes up or not. The reason that it goes up is because this is a thyroglossal cyst and two, it has a uh, sort of a fistula or a tract which goes and is right up to the base of the tongue at the junction of the anterior tooth cut and posterior one cut. The so-called foramen cecum, if you still remember much of your embryology. So, therefore, when they protrude the term, it is more likely to go up rather than by swallowing. Swallowing going up is more in, more in terms of thyroid. Whereas if it is thyroglossal cyst, it is the protrusion of the term, you will find that the cyst is going up. Again, in this, the problem is that the tract which goes up is not anatomically very well defined. In some cases, it may go anterior to the higher bone, in some cases, it may go posterior, in some cases, there may be multiple uh, tracts going up. And therefore, just trying to excise the hyaloglossal cyst with its tract, you might think we have done a great job, but there will be recurrence. So the idea in these cases is besides just taking out the cyst itself, what you need to do is take out the mid portion of the hyoid along with the tract. So if this is what the cyst looks like, this is this is on paper, what you need to do is that is the higher bone which is being cut. So you have to define the higher bone, separate the uh, strap muscles and excise part of the higher bone then remove the tract along with it. See, that's the higher bone which is about to be cut. So you have to go below on each side, cut the higher bone and then dissect out the fistula. Then we close it. Again, another common thing is a uh, swelling in the neck, whether it is a lymph node and whether this is or is not of significance. Not all lymph nodes need to be biopsied, not all lymph nodes need to be taken out. You can give a trial of antibiotics, see whether it is going down. If it is going down, whether it would, nothing to be done. If it persists or it increases, or the age of the child is around 10 years, that's when you should be a little bit suspicious, especially if it is more than what is not 2 centimeters in size. If it is more than 2 centimeters in size, if there are other symptoms, if the child is 10 year old, if there are other lymph nodes elsewhere in the body, the suspicion of either tuberculosis or in an 8 to 10 year old is lymphomas, one of the Hodgkin's non-Hodgkin's. Then you have to do a lymph node biopsy, send it for uh, histopathological examination 
and then only you will be able to get the exact diagnostic on this person. Now, usually this is done as an OPD procedure, does not require to be uh, hospitalized in that sense. We do it as a daycare, send the child home. Six months later, you can hardly see the incision which was taken, if you have taken it in the right place. Sometimes you have a small uh, sinus on one or both sides, where you can hardly see the parents say that something sticky comes out. When you actually massage it, you can see that there is just a small point of uh, fluid coming out, which may be equivalent if it is infected. If it is not infected, it will look like this. This is typically a branchial cyst, which is the second branchial arch. Again, I am going back to embryology. And uh, this will persist, and it may come up in two forms. One, it may come up as a swelling, which is a branchial cyst or it may come like this, which is a branchial sinus. So a branchial sinus is opening, which is ending blindly, and right inside it goes between the two carotids. It goes up towards the mouth, and in the pharynx, at the posterior pillar of the tonsils, that's where it is supposed to be ending. So therefore, if you are removing a branchial sinus, or a branchial cyst with a sinus, or with a tract, then you need to know that we have to go right up to there. Now this is the anatomy. The second branchial cyst and fistula is how this is how it looks. It goes right up to the base of the mouth. Now this is the sinus opening and I have put in a probe which will go inside. And when we are exciting, it goes between the external carotid and the internal carotid. So we have to be very careful about anatomy and not dissecting or cutting left, right and center and go right up to the, almost to the pharynx, excise it along with the tract. And then only, it's one of the things which they say is the anesthetist should put a finger inside and you know, sort of show us that okay, now you have reached the end and that's when we conclude that the surgery is done. What looks like a small sinus here is a huge big tract there, which has to be excised in one piece. Another thing is this uh, torticollis. Torticollis is again uh, congenital. Very often it is found in newborns and the common problem which is always stated is that this is because of rupture of the uh, sternum asteroid, especially in a um, breech delivery. Now, that which makes it iatrogenic in a way, which is not so, because very often they have taken biopsies on the muscle and it has already shown fibrosis. Now if it has occurred at the time of delivery of a breach, there cannot be fibrosis within 3-4 days. Obviously it has occurred before and maybe that is more the cause of breach rather than the other way around. So it's very easy to blame uh, somebody for doing anything when actually it may be a congenital muscular fibrosis on one side of the sternum asteroid. Which is why that sternum asteroid is shortened. Because it is shortened, you will have the neck on one side. And that, that's how it will look. If this child will always have a shortened one on one side. The other side will be normal. Now ideally, if you see these patients as a newborn, there is no need for any surgical intervention. A good physiotherapist along with the parents' uh, cooperation, when the parents are taught how to extend the neck in all six directions. And if they work on that regularly every day at their own residence, 90% I would say would not require any surgical or other intervention. Purely physiotherapy by the parents will help. It's only when A, either the parents are not aware of this, or B, the parents are not properly taught, or the physiotherapist does not uh, inform the parents how exactly to do it. The idea is to make the patient lie down with the neck hanging free. The neck should be outside the table. And with both hands you hold him on the ear. And then you do four exercises. One is passive flexion extension. One is lateral rotation. And the third is uh, shoulder to ear. Now this has to be gradually increased. You cannot do the whole thing in one shot. But before, especially in an older child, 
before you start doing physiotherapy and all that, you must take a X-ray of the cervical vertebrae just to check that there are no cervical vertebral disorder, hemivertebrae or some of that. So then if you start doing physiotherapy, you are going to...